Our playoff spots have been determined and decided who are advancing. Of course, we talked about it before this, but our next two matches will determine which players go in which order and whether we'll have effort or mind directly seated into the grand finals. That's right, Wolf. We have two players fighting for the first seed, which will advance directly to the finals. That's going to be effort and mind. And then our next two players, uh, Sock, uh, well, no, Sock is just eliminated. So we've got mind and uh, Sulky, who will be fighting for the third and fourth place. So uh, the uh, finals or the playoff uh, uh, situation looks like a gauntlet. So you seed one player into the finals, and then you have the two lowest placing players play against each other. And then the winner of that match plays against the next highest placing player. That'll be uh, this player in second place. And the winner of that goes on to the grand finals uh, to play for the uh, victory. If, so, you've, if you're a Pro League fan, it's just like Pro League has always yeah. been played. Uh, in Korea, so that's one way to put it. So Sulky, of course, here, if he uh, beats Free and Effort loses, I think he will get that second place seed, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So he needs to win this, of course. And for Free, this is important for the uh, opposite reason. Obviously, he wants to get to have that better seed. There must be some advantage to having third place seed over fourth. Obviously, the prize money that's on the line is important too. Ria's actually historically kind of been dominant in this matchup, but uh, definitely not flawless in his match against Effort as we had in week three. Uh, struggling in the late game there, but Effort just seems to be the better player right now. Well, the story for Free is that he has a pattern. Lose, win, lose, win, lose, win. Uh, so we don't know if he's going to lose here today, but the pattern does dictate that hey, he... You said it last week, and it came true, man. I mean, it's been true every single week, so if nothing else, Free is at least consistent. Uh, and for Solki, if any Zerg player can take him out, uh, Solki would definitely be uh, very capable of doing that. One of the most impressive uh, StarCraft II players to come back to StarCraft One, and has looked very impressive since doing that. So. Let's go ahead and find out who will be our third and fourth place players in the SSL Classic Playoffs. Go and here we are, our yellow Zerg player spawning in the upper left hand corner uh, of our map. Neo Medusa, that's going to be Solki, his opponent. Our Protoss player is free. Okay, so you know the important things about this map are really just the natural and the temples that are stacked on top of each other to block mm -hmm. the back door which obviously Zerg has an advantage in clearing because Lurkers have AoE damage to work against these stacked buildings. So it's important for Free to, of course, spot for that uh, with a pylon, as we've seen everyone do on this map of this matchup so far this tournament. Yeah. That's going to be a big factor. Otherwise, I mean, the map just functions normally. A three-player map. Both players actually scouting incorrectly here to start. Okay, so uh, from what I've been seeing uh, in the matches that uh, Solki has played on, uh, both Neo Medusa and Outsider, uh, more on Outsider than uh, Neo Medusa, just because of the way the map uh, is structured. Uh, but the air play is very, very important. Uh, so a lot of times, Solki has gone mutilists here. That's what we should be looking for. But uh, on, on the other side, uh, for free, he's actually been kind of favoring uh, a, a big, heavy, uh, you know, dark Templar, high Templar kind of style. Mostly actually going for high Templar, and then just having the sickest storms I've ever seen. Uh, at least that's sort of what I've identified uh, him for in SSL. So, um, you know, you're going to be kind of curious to see which, which free shows up here because he's been very uh, uh, greedy and has been punished for it many, many times. Yeah, and on this map, you can... Uh, the rush distance, even between these two bases, is not very far, so you can actually hit really aggressive That's hydro bus. So, I've seen a lot of that. It feels like this tournament, compared to the ASL, we've seen a lot more aggression, a lot more timing attacks in uh, in SSL, and ASL it tends to go for longer, more macro-oriented games. So, 
Um, obviously, that there are exceptions to this rule, but it's kind of been how it's been so far. So we'll see. Uh, I'm not saying just because this is the SSL we're going to see a Hydra boss, but there's definitely a strong possibility. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've seen, uh, I think, two so f or three so far this season. Uh, so I actually really love that build because it's it's so powerful, uh, but it, it also can be completely countered if you see it in time. You just have to make sure that you get in there for the scouting. So yeah, and this is kind of the beginning of a larger series between the two of these players because they will because they're both in third and fourth place will play that first match of the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, starting off next week. So. This is going to be kind of a precursor to that playoffs match, so they might actually do something a little bit unusual here to hide what they have planned for facing off against each other next week. Um, of course, they just because of the results now know this is the way it's going to be 100%. Before this match, before the results we had for the first best of ones tonight, they weren't able to know for sure they would have those playoff spots or what position they'd be, but now they know, of course, third and fourth uh, is their positions. So they, they, we may see something tricky or an all-in just because uh, you know it's a way to perhaps get the win but also hide what you have prepared for the maps going forward. Yeah, that is definitely true. Uh, this is not going to be the last time we see these guys play against each other. Um, so uh, Overlord Scout successful. It's going to show Solki exactly where Free is. Um, I mean, even if you don't scout successfully with your Overlords, you're still going to know where the opponent is because it's only a three-player map. Um, and this probe continuing to stay alive should be in the base for uh, a little bit longer. Uh, good Protoss players can keep that alive until maybe about the five minute mark. Uh, and then Speedlings come out and, well, I mean, even probes can't stand up to quite that. Yep, that's true. So, probe will now, looks like, take the third base one more time and then head home. So, confirm, saw the lair. That's pretty common. So we'll see these Stargate come up fairly soon to go into Corsairs. Mm -hmm. You know, the the reason why Stargate builds are so popular, well, one of the reasons why is because Mutalists are so difficult to deal with as Protoss, but if you have the Corsairs, you just shut that down. But trying right. to deal with Mutalists with Dragoons and make a Photon Cannon is very expensive, so this kind of just shuts down that possibility of, of Mutalists as a, as a thing. When you go for the Corsair opening, it's like, well, you just can't go Mutas now, or you're just going to be cost inefficient. Yeah. Hydrodin is coming up. He has a fast third base as you do on this map, so the big thing to look out now for is whether he adds a macro hatch or several um, in the next coming moments. This is actually not a tight wall, so these lings, uh, even though they could run by, they won't because of the cannon there, but we need to be careful with that Zelt. doesn't want it to be pulled out here by the lings, as it's happening now, because he's microing over here. Oh, he's actually going to try to run past the Zealot, let it in, and then let the, the lings that hatch deal with it but uh, I mean those drones do need some escorts that is not uh yeah actually really odd that he I mean, he must not have been paying attention to those things because definitely would have wanted to grab that zealot early on we'll get it anyways here despite the fact that it got into a nice position so maximum value for free out of that zealot mm -hmm. um either way the links did come home and now the first Corsair is about to pop out we're going to see table archives so everything very normal here the the next uh, phase of this game will be dictated by the Zerg. Adds an extractor, not any extra hatcheries. Hmm. Some Hydra's on the way, but I think he's going to be teching to the Lurkers here just based on what we see. It's not actually going for a big aggressive attack. Yeah, uh, so uh, a lot of Zerg players can go for two bases, three hatcheries, but if you take three, uh, uh, three bases separately, then a lot of times that makes you a little bit more vulnerable, just more surface area to attend to. And while this is just a scouting Corsair, it's not designed to you know kill every Overlord in the game, uh, it'll be interesting to see whether or not Free wants to commit to a big cloud of Corsairs, because he's already going to know that the Hydralis Den is on the way. Looks like he's just going to stop at one for the time being. Four, first four Hydras are going to be annoying to deal with, but this is not, again, a boss by any means. It's not an all-in. It's just pressure, because Zealots can't deal with this. Photon yep. Cannons are not going to protect this either, so it's going to be really annoying for him to deal with this small group of six Hydras in total. Actually, it feels comfortable to use the, or force, rather, to use these uh, Zealots. He's not comfortable yeah. while he's doing it. He just doesn't want to lose that gateway and then start to lose his Photon Cannons before the storm is ready. This is really annoying to deal with because there's just no... You don't want to be making Dragoons. So you're just kind of like, ah, oh, well, I guess I just have to sit back and let my gateway die. The more important building is going to be the Forge, and if he can actually stop that from upgrading, that would be massive. He's actually mm -hmm. not doing that right now, uh, but he should be. Yeah, he'll need to reposition just a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is a, kind of like what uh, PVT looks like, where Protoss uses Dragoons to pressure the Terrans front. Yeah. Well, no, now this the, the shoe, as they say, Wolf, is uh, on the other foot as the uh, Zerg player is pressuring down 
the Protoss' uh, front door. Now, hey, here Zealot comes... Zealot Speed's finished. Yep, Zealot Speed, Zealot Legs, gonna be pushing back all these Hydras. Uh, it's possible to surround them with Zealots, and it looks like he is trying to do that unsuccessfully so, but will at least take one uh, Hydra off the map. Now, you can overextend with these uh, Zealots and have Zerglings run around behind, stop them from running away, and Hydras and Zerglings just, you know, kill more Zealots than three can afford to lose. Exactly. So then that would uh, just cause a counterattack to snowball the game. Um, the Forge lived, right? It didn't. Uh, it did. It's still on the mini-map for now, but uh, obviously could have replaced it. I'm pretty sure yeah, yeah, it's it lived. It's still upgrading, so... That's the key here. He sent the Zealots out. He had that uh, Zealot Leg Enhancement upgrade finished in time to keep the Forge alive. And I believe there's still only one Corsair, so that uh, might not be any more for the time being. Uh, but speaking of morph, uh, this is uh, going to be the Lurkers coming out, just finishing hatching up right about now. And that was scouted by those Zealots that pushed out across the map. So Free knows what's coming. Yep. He's actually going to try to sneak around a run Ooh. by here with his plus one attack, but... That's obviously going to be a lot less units he has at home. Now, this is the temple we were talking about that will be destroyed. Um, it's actually like 10 step temple stacked on top of each other, but it will be destroyed by uh, these lurkers very quickly with the AoE damage. He doesn't actually have a spotter at all for this, so that's a little bit worrisome. If these units actually sneak into the base without him knowing it, it would be a huge oversight by Free. Here's that run by we were talking about. Only a few Hydras here, in fact, with the rest of the army off the map. This actually works out really well for uh, Free here because it's just not enough to deal with this. Finally, a few more Hydras pop out. Yeah, he's not controlling those Hydras, so the Zealots will actually get right on top of them. Uh, Zealots, uh, or uh, Lurkers, stopped attacking those temples, so uh, it was not able to break through there. Uh, finally, these uh, Zealots should be able to get cleaned up thanks to the Hydra positioning there in the mineral lines, but uh, still some Zealots surviving. It's just going to be so annoying. This is so huge for free. He doesn't know it yet, but with the Lurkers that are about to come into his main base, if he hadn't done damage here, he would be in a, such a dire spot, but he has nothing spawning for this, and also, Sulky knows that because he had an Overlord on top of this the entire mm -hmm. time. This is about to be disastrous damage. Oh yeah, if he just doesn't know what he he's just about has, to have I mean, to he has, he has the pylon up here to stop things like this from happening, but he didn't ha have units in position. He wants to spread against this storm. Okay. okay, dodges right. it decently, only loses the one. Now there are uh, at least one more storm there, but here is going to be the big, uh, you know, bust towards the front door. Simultaneously trying to drop the natural, but that's not even going to matter here. It, it, Free might just die if too much, uh, if too much works out here for Soul. You just normally don't have to deal with two fronts of damage like this, but but he does because he didn't have anything to spot for those lurkers. He wasn't <laughs> set up to deal with that. The slowest storm drop in the world right there. Drones pulled before the side storm even came down. This uh, is almost too much damage already here. The lurker oh yeah. egg is about to hatch too to make another lurker. There, there's going to be a few more storms here for free, but there just won't be enough. Nice yep. control there, moving the Hydras away from the <laughs> storms, and not enough speed zealots because so many were committed to harassment. Yeah. Okay, well, all these Hydras are super low now and several more will actually die. Oh. The storms were good. He's going to hold okay. here. But, and this Zealot is doing more damage here on the main base. This actually could be a potential turnaround here. It was surprising how many storms he actually had banked up, but he only made the one Corsair like you were talking about. He right. had uh, that extra gas to get Storm out very early, made those High Templar very early. So we'll remake his forge now, but Soki types out, man. Uh, what a turnaround. He actually just barely held with those extra storms. Yeah, I actually That's, thought Free was going to die there. Yeah, I mean, I, I think everybody did. The, the, there was this moment where the extra storms came in, and of course those High Templar weren't shown on screen for us, but when those High Templar came over the extra storms, the crowd erupted, and uh, you know the Korean commentators were popping up with us, because it was like, well, just, I didn't know he had those, right? If he doesn't have those, those Hydras kill everything. It doesn't matter about the Zealot at home. And that's what Sulky banked everything on, too, is I need to, I need to kill this base. I'm not even going to deal with the Zealot that's in my main, just killing every single drone. Yeah, uh, that's and he was so close. He, he really was. And uh, even if that uh, push hadn't worked, uh, Sulky would have been fine. And then we look back into his main and see that there are no drones left. You're like, oh, okay, well, he just has no, uh, no mining. Uh, so with that victory, that will secure free the third place finish in the SSL Classic. That means that he'll be seeded third going into the playoffs. And that'll put him once again up against uh, Sulky in that third and fourth place match to start off the gauntlet. That's right. So our last match will determine who's going to the grand finals of Mind and Effort. This is going to be the best match of the night, no doubt. It's first versus second in the standings currently. Winner will take that first place spot and uh, we'll be going to our grand finals. So I'm pretty hyped about this one. 
And the matches tonight didn't disappoint. I feel like this is one of our best days of SSL Classic so far. Yeah, absolutely. Every single game coming down to the wire, it, every single game matters. It means something to every player. And now we get to see uh, possibly the most meaningful match of the night where we find out which player advances all the way to the Grand Finals and just doesn't have to play any series until then. Uh, it's, a, it's a big, a big victory. If you can take this game, you are guaranteed a spot in the Finals. You're guaranteed at least first or second place. And I, I really like this gauntlet format because it allows the regular season, the round robin, which is still a fairly unique format to have in a StarCraft tournament. Uh, it makes that very meaningful. So your position really does d determine uh, a lot for you when it comes to playoffs. Absolutely. Um, just to point one more thing out before we run to this commercial break, uh, there's no relegation system in this format. So next uh, season could be totally different. It's not announced yet what we're going to be having next season. But guys, we're going to take a short, very, very short commercial break before we go to our final and most amazing match of the evening to decide who's getting that first place spot. See you guys in just a few.